What is behind the Doklam standoff? How Doklam is strategically important for India? Will the Doklam standoff result in war? What is current situation? To get the answer of these questions, please stay till the end of this video, and don't forget to subscribe my channel. Before answering these questions, and to understand the current ongoing standoff on, Doklam, it is very important to know and understand, the India-China, border geography. China and India, are separated by the Himalaya. Both share a border with, Nepal, and Bhutan, acting as buffer states, which follows, the Himalaya between Burma, and Bangladesh. A number of disputed regions, lie along this border, and both India, and China were engaged in war in 1962. Among the disputed regions, the Aksai Chin and Arunachal Pradesh, are on the top in the list. Doklam is an area disputed between China and Bhutan, located near the tri-junction with India. Doklam is an area with a plateau and a valley, lying between China's Chumbi Valley to the north, Bhutan's Ha Valley to the east and India's Sikkim State to the west. Unlike China and Bhutan, India does not claim Doklam, but supports Bhutan's claim. In June 2017, Chinese army attempted to extend a road at Doklam Plateau. According to new friendship treaty between India and Bhutan, it is mandatory for Bhutan to take India's guidance on foreign policy with border sovereignty and not require Bhutan to obtain India's permission over arms imports. So on the 18th of June, Indian troops crossed into the territory, in an attempt to prevent the road construction. India has criticized China, for crossing the border and attempting to construct a road, illegally, while China has criticized India, that India has no legal grounds. As a country, India is shaped rather, oddly. It has a giant peninsula to the south, has a dog-head shaped state to the west and large disputed borders in the north. Then there is the east, or more particularly, the northeast. The presence of Bangladesh means that, the northeast is connected with the mainland by a particularly thin piece of land, called the Siliguri Corridor. This narrow strip which, slims down to 17 kilometers at its narrowest. This is also known by Chicken's Neck. The corridor is extremely important for India because it runs its rail and road networks towards the northeast through it. If China is able to block off the corridor, this will isolate the northeast and will cut off the supplies and reinforcements reaching that area. There is no sea route, as the northeast is completely landlocked. Limited provisions can reach the region if India uses only aeroplanes. In June 2017, India accused China of constructing a road in the disputed territory on the Doklam Plateau. This road link would allow China to transport troops and munitions practically at India's doorstep with great ease. China wants to get as close to the Siliguri Corridor as it can because then it gets the option of cutting off the northeast from the rest of India. This means the armed forces stationed in the northeast will stop getting provisions and reinforcements, requiring a complete rethink of India's military strategy. It also allows conflict to rise in the northeast, as it gets away from India's direct administration. This gives China twofold benefit as India's northeastern troops fall in disarray and India's gets another headache of maintaining order in the northeast. This is the reason why India stands strongly on Doklam conflict between China and Bhutan. The mounting military tensions at Doklam, China, and India, have generated the impression that India and China are going to repeat their 1962 war. Chinese media and think tanks, have warned India that conflict can lead to war if not handled properly, and India should learn lessons from history. In New Delhi the rhetoric is similarly tough. 
For instance, when Beijing invoked the 1962 war and its humiliation for India, Defence Minister Aaron Jaitley replied that India of 2017 is different from India of 1962. Likewise, General Bipin Rawat, India's Chief of Army Staff also acknowledged the possibility of an Indochina war and said that the Indian Army is fully ready for a two-and-a-half front war. The possibility of war between the two nuclear-armed giants of the Asia-Pacific, with their 2.6 billion combined population, has been one of the significant concerns of the global strategic community for the last few decades. If the question is whether India will go to war with China, my answer is a sound no. The reasons go beyond strategic calculations, such as strength and numbers of forces and weapons. In other words, cognizance of pure military strength and weakness is not the primary force that stops New Delhi from firing the first bullet against its enemy. It is the structure of the government, and concerns of leaders about the domestic constituency that holds back a forward move. It is also difficult for China to launch war against India because of the huge Chinese investment in India. But if China will fire first bullet then there is very high possibility of war between two Asian giants. In case of war, there is high possibility that China will lose its territories, if India get the support from United States, Japan and Israel. While, China still stands on its no compromise policy on Doklam standoff, with India and demanding for unconditional, withdrawal of Indian troops from Doklam, India has deployed more troops along the entire stretch of its border with China in Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh sectors. The move to increase the deployment along the nearly 1,400 km China-India border, from Sikkim to Arunachal Pradesh was taken after, conducting a detailed analysis of the situation. The officials also ruled out, increase of troops at the India-China Bhutan Tri-Junction in Doklam, where around 350 army personnel are holding on to their position since June 16 when they stopped Chinese troops from constructing a road near the disputed region. Indian External Affairs Minister, Sushma Swaraj, met Bhutanese Foreign Minister in Kathmandu, on 11 August. After the meeting Bhutanese Foreign Minister said, we hope the situation in Doklam will be resolved peacefully and amicably. Both the leaders were in Kathmandu, to attend the meeting of foreign ministers. However, it was not disclosed, what both leaders discussed during their meeting but, there are speculations that, the current Doklam standoff was on the agenda. China Daily has warned that their countdown to a clash between the two forces has begun. But India still stands on its first statement, that withdrawal of forces should be mutual that means that India will withdraw its army, if and only if, China withdraw its army from Doklam. As the days are passing, it is very difficult for China to launch any operation on Doklam which is far away from its mainland due to coming winter season in this region. The picture on Doklam will be clear in next 15 days.